All right, what's going on everyone? Welcome to the video, welcome to the channel. We're back with another 1v1 duel, and this time we've got UA Jean going up against Mr. Wen Yang. We've got the new hero of the age, the new Zhao Yun, going against one of the five elite generals of Wei, probably one of the strongest among the Wei Kingdom, UA Jean versus Wen Yang. Who do you guys think would come out on top in a genuine duel between UA Jean and Wen Young. Just like in the previous video, we're going to analyze every single source of information, compile it together, and then by the end of the video, I will let you guys know who I think would come out on top based on my analysis of each of the characters. With that being said, we're going to go ahead and jump right into the historical information and feats between both of the characters. Let's go ahead and start off with Mr. Wen Young. So Wen Young is a very interesting character in history. He doesn't have as much information as UA Jean, but I would say he did do a significant amount within the time that he was part of the Wei Kingdom or Jean, depending on how you want to look at that. So starting off from his earlier days back in 255 when the rebellion was started, he actually ended up fighting Dang Ai, who had 100,000 troops reinforced to him by Sima Shi without Wen Yang knowing and he ended up surviving it. There was also an instance that I read that he fought Dang Ai for about 50 bouts but he was defeated and during his retreat ended up killing a bunch of soldiers on his way out. And then after the rebellion in the 255 initiated by his father he fought Sima Ban who had 8,000 troops go after him while Wen Yang had about a dozen people with him and he turned back and attacked them killing hundreds of soldiers weaving in and out of the enemy formation. There's a couple of different discrepancies with this. This could be real, this could be fake. I read a lot of different things on people either agreeing or disagreeing with this piece of information, but it is there, so I'm going to give it to Wen Yang. I'm not going to say that he went in every single time and killed 100 people. I think he, in total, got close to killing 100 people. It seems more realistic, especially when we get to his weapon style and like his martial arts skills. I can see him, if he was as good as they say, I can see him dispatching soldiers going in and out of formation while keeping himself safe. Safe. Then skipping ahead to probably his most famous exploit after the games and this is in history, he attacked the Xianbei Barbarians and defeated the leader and acquired about 200,000 extra soldiers for his kingdom at the time. And then the last thing about Wen Yang is that Zhang Hui was noted to say his strength was equal to that of 1,000 men. So Wen Yang definitely has a good track record for his historical information. But with that being said, that's pretty much all I have for Wen Yang in his historical information slash feats. Let's go ahead and move over to Yue Jin. So his early career, he participated in Xia Pi with success in the Battle of Wan Castle. It was a success individually for Yue Jin, even though they lost, he performed admirably and was promoted for that. He ended up killing a bandit by the name of Sui Gu and ended up bringing him back to Cao Cao. And he also participated in the Battle of Shu Province when they ended up acquiring Guan Yu. Skipping a little forward over to the battle with Yuan Shao. Starting off with the Battle of Yan Jin, a significant strategic position for Yuan Shao's forces. Him and Eugene set fire to 30 camps, routed, and captured several thousand men along with forcing dozens of officers to surrender. So starting off the battle, he's already looking really good. And then, this is very famous within the games and within history as well, Yue Jin is the one responsible for burning the supply depot at Wu Chao. He was picked specifically by Cao Cao to raid it. He ended up killing the officer guarding it, Chen Yu Qiong, in order to burn the supplies down, resulting in a huge victory for the forces of Cao. Then a little later, as they're pursuing the remnants of Yuan Shao's forces, he ends up defeating two officers by the name of Yan Jing and Yuan Tan in battle. Then he has a couple of other miscellaneous accolades by defeating some more other Yellow Turban officers and pirate groups. And then skipping down a little later to the Battle of Chi Bi, after the Wei forces were defeated and they were pursuing Cao Cao, he hindered the advance of Guan Yu by beating him twice. Twice beating him twice in battle. I don't know if it was like a one on one thing or even if they had contact with each other, but Yue Jin is noted to have beaten Guan Yu twice while he was trying to pursue Cao Cao. He defeated so many miscellaneous officers, and then of course, his biggest thing is probably he performed outstandingly at the Battle of Hefei. I don't have much else to say about it. It's a pretty clear cut winner on the first round here. Yue Jin is going to take the first point. He has an exorbitant amount of information for his historical information and presence so he's going to take the point now moving into in-game feats in-game accomplishments 
let's go ahead and move back over to Mr. Wen Yang. So Wen Yang within the games is very interesting. Wen Yang, for lack of better terms, is given the kill of Sima Shi. Because in Dynasty Warriors 7, he is the one that shoots the arrow at him and hits him in the face or the metal piece. The resulting injury is what ends up killing Sima Shi. So within the game, Wen Yang is given the kill for Sima Shi. He didn't like fight him one-on-one -on -one or anything like that. He just ended up shooting him while his dad had him occupied. And the resulting damage from that blow is what killed Sima Shi. Of course, we have the beautiful cutscene of Wen Yang being introduced in Dynasty Warriors 8, his playable debut absolutely on another level and then he also has a cutscene of throwing his javelin hitting his father disarming him which means he's got range with his weapon and that's pretty much it for Wen Young there's not a lot of content for either characters within the game specifically so in-game feats is hard to really get a lot of information on but Wen Young definitely has a decent amount and having a couple under his belt now let's go ahead and move on to Mr. Yue Jin now Yue Jin unfortunately the only real thing he has within the game this is only the main game series because I have played the extreme legends or i'm not going to include any empire stuff because that's all fake but in terms of in-game canon main game series the only thing i can think of for ua gene is the battle of hafei he runs in with Li Dian, they save zhang liao he kills a couple of you know soldiers and they end up rounding booing with zhang liao so that's pretty much all i have for ua gene not the strongest point for him so i'm gonna have to go ahead and give this round the in-game feat round to mr Wen Yang. So we're all tied up now going into round three. Let's go ahead and talk about in-game weapons. So moving back over to Wen Yang. So Wen Yang, he's got the javelin and the long tau da jia dao we're going to give him the javelin in this one i think it's a better weapon for him the long tau da jia dao is not really a good weapon to be used really at all uh, in the game or in real life as well it's not a proficient or even realistic type of weapon so with the javelin like i already mentioned he's got one the range being able to throw his weapon and then he's also got the range of the weapon itself being a little longer than your normal weapon i wouldn't say it's like a spear it doesn't have the length Length, you know, the range of a spear but it has that advantage to him if he wants to use it and again just like in the last video no powers or anything like that but i will give the javelin the booming effect that it leaves behind so when he throws it it's with force it's with a little bit of umph behind it because wen yang in history was known to be a physically strong person from like when he was 17 he was physically strong his presence was very very intimidating he was a big guy i believe he was reported to be about eight chi tall which is hard to believe because i think that converts to about almost nine feet in, in height so he was a really big guy really super strong um, so i'm going to give him the booming effect with, with the javelin because i believe he would be able to create that kind of force behind the blows that he throws with his weapon if that makes sense so a lot of good things for him with the in-game weapon the javelin's a very strong weapon it's really fun to use and it has a lot of benefits i think personally for wen yang then moving over to ua gene so he's got the hook blades he's more of a athletic quicker kind of character on his feet constantly moving his musao attacks kind of play on that a little bit as well very athletic very quick he moves around a lot and the hook blades also have the advantage of the grappling you have the grappling moves with it and then with the hook blades i believe it would be easier for ua gene to defend himself he's got the spikes on it he's got shorter range weapons short to medium range i, I believe the javelin in terms of range would have a little bit more of an advantage than the hook blades because you have to get closer you have to really find your opening with the hook blades but ua gene is quick he's He's athletic the hook blades is a great weapon for him constantly bouncing on his feet finding ways to get around people and doing as much damage as he can as quickly as he can so now these are two great weapons right Wen Yang has the javelin I don't mind playing it it has properties of a spear that can be thrown and of course the booming effects within the game is really fun to use hopefully they bring it back for him in Dynasty Warriors 10 and then you have UA Gene with his hook blades another fun style I love any weapon that allows you to grapple people the animations are always really cool and then of course him being quick and just it's a fun weapon. It's a nice, decent move set. I've had a lot of fun playing UA Gene with his hook blade. So I'm looking at both characters objectively. I think if I had to choose, I would give the edge to Wen Yang. So I think I would give Wen Yang the edge here with his javelin, with his size, his armor. I think UA Gene would have a hard time getting past that with his weapon style. So I would have to give the point here to Wen Yang. All right, moving over to martial arts skills and intelligence of the characters. All right, so starting off with Wen Yang once again. 
So going back to his martial arts skill, so he has the javelin or a beyond gun, a shorter bow staff. Wen Yang was reported to be an expert beyond gun user. He was also noted to be a gifted martial artist and like I've already mentioned before, he was physically strong from a young age. So you take the strength that he has and put it into the fact that he is a gifted martial artist and that makes for a very imposing threat to anyone that faces him. And then his intelligence, I wouldn't say he's necessarily the most intelligent. I think he has more of like an innate, impulsive, instinctual type of intelligence. Meaning, because he has the feats of kind of going into battle without really thinking about other possibilities or, or like what could happen to him, I think he kind of lacks the strategic intelligence that you would expect from like normal generals. I don't know if that makes sense. And I'm not trying to take away from his intelligence, but when he had his feat of weaving in and out of officers and killing, you know, dozens at a time, whatever the story is, it's not the most intelligent thing to do. It's him having the innate confidence and the reliability on his skills to keep himself alive, to be able to weave in and out of the thousands of troops chasing after him and still remain alive. I don't think he has that strategic intelligence. It's more of a gung-ho kind of personality. So I think in terms of intelligence, he takes a little bit of a knock there. He, he seems like more of the Sun Tzu type. Let's take advantage where we have it and think about it later. That's why he ended up in that situation with Deng Ai, thinking that he had the advantage. And then he ended up, I think, getting surrounded by 100,000 people. Or Sima Shi brought 100,000 people and he ended up getting away safely and retreating. But instead of thinking it through, he thought he had the advantage and ended up getting outwitted. Then moving over to Yue Jin. So in terms of martial arts skills, there's nothing noted about his martial arts skill. He was a very valorous and ferocious fighter on the battlefield he was constantly finding ways to successfully come out on top in the numerous campaigns that he was a part of i'm assuming this is all just based on implication that because he was part of the xiapi battle because he was part of the guandu battle and killing all these miscellaneous officers being that kind of person being an elite general of way because of his accomplishments and because of everything that he achieved i would say innately he has a really strong martial artist. There's nothing that's noted about it, but I'm going to say that it was definitely apparent because of the things that he achieved as a general under the Wei Kingdom. And then moving over to his intelligence, again, I'm going to have to say I think he has a little bit more of an edge over Wen Yang when it comes to intelligence just because I think him being trusted to do so many different things, I don't think he was as... I think I think both of them have a gung-ho mentality. I think they're both like vanguard leaders, or cavalry unit leaders to where they're going to rush in and kind of they'll, they'll fight one-on-one -on -one and Yue Jin's on the front line. He's that kind of guy. And I think Wen Yang is also that type of personality as well. But I think Yue Jin is a little bit more intelligent, especially in his historical information because you cannot have so much success, even in instances of defeat, without being intelligent. Beating Guan Yu twice in battle is a huge thing. Helping Zhang Li out the battle of Hefei being outnumbered 10 to 1 or whatever the number was it was ridiculous and still being able to wait to come out on top or find ways to stay alive and keep your people safe whatever it may be i think ua has a little bit more maybe not strategic intelligence but like commanding intelligence versus wen yang i think wen yang falls a little short there but i think wen yang has the advantage when it comes to his martial arts skills because it was actually noted for him that he was a gifted martial artist expert beyond gun user so I think they kind of even each other out in terms of martial arts skills and intelligence. So with that being said, I think for this category itself, I think both of these characters actually are even. I think they're actually right on the cusp of each other. They're very similar, like their strength is so similar, so close to each other. It's hard to really see who would get a notch up in this one. So I want to give a point. To both of these characters now moving over to the last one we have the x factor all right so the x factor was kind of interesting to find for these two because they're so similar the more that i thought about this matchup and the reason i wanted to do it is because these characters are so similar like i've already said i think these are two characters who would be at the head of a cavalry unit the head of the front line going in gung-ho and fighting it out i think these two are very similar when it comes to personality so in terms of x factor and starting with wen young so i keep going back to it i'm going to go to it once again this guy was eight chi tall and he was a gifted martial artist this is his x factor why is it his x factor because it's what kept him alive in history he was successful in the barbarian thing he's successful weaving in and out of people he's successful in the games being surrounded by 15 20 soldiers killing all of them 
and then of course disarming his father with perfect accuracy after throwing his javelin. I think he is a force to be reckoned with. He's got a very intimidating presence of, and I think that it would pose a threat for anybody going against Mr. Wen Young. Then over to Yue Jin. So his X Factor is a little interesting. Yue Jin's X Factor is his courageousness, his ferociousness, and his athletic ability. So I would say in terms of like Wen Young versus Yue Jin, Yue Jin would be more of an agile, quick kind of fighter. I think Wen Young would have similar capabilities, but I think in this kind of a fight, I think Wen Young would be more on the defensive versus Yue Jin because of how quick I think Yue Jin would be if we give him his hook blades and we put him one on one against Mr. Wen Young. And then of course, trying to compile everything that Yue Jin has done within history and then in the games, he's got a lot of courage and ferociousness coming up on top against a lot of officers in the game. Again, Guan beating Guan Yu in battle, whether it be his army or just him at some point engaging with Guan Yu and pushing him back. It's a very crazy feat to kind of think about that he was able to do that. So we can't sleep on Yue Jin with his X Factor. So before I reveal who I think would come out on top, I want you guys to take a look at this. And there we go. For me personally, just because of everything that is compiled, the information, everything like that, I think he has the experience. I think he has maybe a little bit more of the advantage just in terms of his intelligence. He would find a way to outmaneuver and come up on top against Wen Young. Yue Jin would be the winner for me. That, just me personally, because I think because he's done so much and he's so experienced and it's not discounting Wen Young and you know just because he has a little bit less information and everything like that but I think because of Yue Jin's experience and he really honestly didn't really lose at all within his history I don't even I mean his death I think it was just illness it wasn't even recorded I believe I think he would find a way to come out on top against Wen Young even though he's bigger he's coated in armor he would find a way to take him down at some point Wen Young had a bout with Dang Ai for 15 50 rounds and ended up having to retreat. In this situation, I think Yue Jin will find a way to outlast him and come out on top. But with that being said, that's all I have for the video, guys. Hope you guys are enjoying this series, the Who Would Win series, pitting one character against another, people who are of similar strength to each other. I'm obviously not going to do like Lu Bu versus like Yuan Shao. It'd be ridiculous to expect that kind of a match to even be a match. It'd be a very easy and short video. <laughs> um, but I'm trying to put characters against each other that are good matchups, interesting matchups, similar in strength, or I end up finding finding more about them and I'm like wow okay these guys are actually a lot closer than I thought they would be and then when I sit down compile it and really think about it who would I say would come out on top and in this case I think it would be UA Gene. but with that being said hope you guys enjoyed the video that's all I have for you guys again a lot of the information that I found that I didn't know I found from three kings which will be linked in the description down below if you guys have any questions for me let me know if you guys have any ideas for who you want to see on a 1v1 matchup? Who do you think would be a good 1v1 matchup? Let me know down below and I'll get to analyzing it. But that's all I have for the video, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And I will see you all in the next video. Thanks for watching, everyone.